Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging hour discussing everything you need to know about... We're going to have to find busy. out... Busy, uh, we'll busy, busy, have to find man. out what he's been up to. Yes, and I'm sure he'll tell us all. Uh-huh. And I'm sure that all the listeners miss him as well. And with that in mind, please remember that Tuesday, November 3rd, from 3 to 6, is the last Real Estate Radio Live community event for 2015. Yeah, Where was, did the year go? That's the one, the live event that they do the, with three to four on the radio and then a wonderful social time afterward. And it's open to the general public and mm-hmm. realtors and They always everybody. have an interesting guest. Yeah. Always. And it's at the Toll House Hotel in Los Gatos. So if you want more information, do community at com for more information. But remember, it's the last one, guys. Then we'll be celebrating 2016. I still can't believe it's gone. No, no. It's, it disappeared again. It did. You blinked, and there it went. No. And if you want to contact us on anything today, you want to call in, because we've got a terrific program for you. It's Pets in Their Home. You dial 1-800-516-1220. That's 800-516-1220. Or you can text me at 650 650- Three four six five three five two. If you're too shy to hear your voice on radio, but we're going to start. But is there a perfect match? Is there a perfect match for your home? Well, it's largely up to you. Whether you live in an apartment, a condo, a single-family home with a yard, how you go about looking for the special addition to your family is really an interesting process. Careful is the word. What you may think looks good to your mind's eye may end up being a huge mistake with all the creatures involving, that are involved, rather. Including, including yourself. you. Yourself, <laughs> yes. Yes. So, with that, how about introducing our guest? So, um, we have an old friend on that's done our television show on, a, on kind of the same subject, but everything changes over time. Um, he's been on the Real Estate with Bobby Decker show in the past, and we had some wonderful pets on, and television lets you uh, see them visually, so that's a nice attribute. But he's the Senior Vice President Community Community Relationships with Peninsula Humane Society, and that's our old pal, Scott DeLuke. Hey, you said old twice, buddy. (laughs) Oh, it's only because we've been older, Scott. We've been around for such a long time. <laughs> when, I have when, I'm going on 17 years at Peninsula Humane Society next week. I know. Wow. But, but uh, as I recall, you always look so young and refreshed. He does. He's got a young voice, too. That's, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so we thought if, if you could give us a little bit of the insight for homeowners and renters and everybody on, on the different kinds of pets that the Humane Society has because some people only think about cats and dogs, but you actually have quite a substantial list. Why don't you give us a little insight as to uh, what the Peninsula Humane Society has uh, as far as available pets? Oh, and sure. I'll answer your question first. Is there a perfect pet? The answer is yes. We do. We do have one, <laughs> and I'm sure we have one for many people out there who are looking. Right now, we have oh about 45 dogs available for adoption. We have at least double that many cats. We have a dozen or so rabbits. We have other small companions like hamsters, guinea pigs. We even, believe it or not, have a few domestic rats available for adoption or soon to be um, made available for adoption. I don't know if they've moved over from our other facility, and we can talk about the two differences between our facilities later. And then we also have um, a small number of uh, pet birds available for adoption. People always wonder you know, how, how the animals come to us. And one of my favorite stories is a story about a bird. It was someone was bringing us their own pet bird to relinquish it to to our, uh, to Peninsula Humane Society. They they didn't want their pet anymore. And we were surprised because it was a really expensive bird. The bird was in good shape physically, um, which is not always what we see with birds. And we said, well, this, this is really odd. Why are you bringing, you know, this bird to us? And the man said, well, I'm a little embarrassed. He kind of pulled us aside. He said, I got remarried, and my bird keeps saying my ex-wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we understood that one. Yeah. That's so funny. They had a Frasier or something like that. Remember where they had, somebody had taught the bird to speak poorly of other people. 
Oh. And gossip, and, and, and that created havoc through the show. It was a very cute show. Yeah, very Fraser clever. actually hurt animal shelters kind of in a funny way because the dog on the show, Eddie, uh-huh. yes. Jack Russell Terrier, everybody who saw that dog expected every other Jack Russell Terrier to be like that dog. You know, just real mild-mannered and um, very calm, just jumps on his owner's lap to sit in the easy chair. It's, it's, it's not exactly what the breed is known for. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> We'll probably get into that in a little yeah. more detail down the road a little bit. Well, tell us about all the growth with the Humane Society. Your big gala is coming up, and I understand it's sold out. Yeah, it's sold out for probably, you know, this is, it's going to be a true sellout this year. We've gotten close in other years, and mm-hmm. it's really our, our one big event of the year. And it will raise a couple hundred thousand dollars for animals, all the money raised during this event. And our auxiliary ladies do a fantastic job putting this event together, soliciting the items for the silent auction. We have live auction items. Um, and it just raises a ton of money for our HOPE program. And that's the money that helps us make well those animals who come to us needing something before they can go into new homes. They could be you know, dogs, dogs or cats mostly who come to us with a medical condition or some behavioral issue where they're not quite ready to be, to be a pet that people expect. They need some work. Um, mm-hmm. It could be a surgery. It could be, you know, extensive work with our behavior team to help help a dog get over, you know, being really shy and withdrawn. So that's what I mean. The the cause couldn't be any more important for us. And it's really it's the hard work that we do. When animals come to us perfectly healthy, those are the easy ones for us. All we need is someone willing to adopt them. You know, they're mm-hmm. we've adopted 100% of our healthy dogs and cats going on 13 years now. We always say that's the, it's impressive, but I mean that's the easy work for us. The harder work is making those animals who come to us with some kind of condition, making them better, and that's what we're really proud of. And that's what you do so well. And now you've got the two facilities, and I found out about that, and you can elaborate, but I found a dove, and the dove had gotten stunned during one of those release of the doves, doves oh. for um, weddings, uh-huh. and it was walking around in our cul-de-sac. Really, really oh. off balance, and we were able to get it in the car, in a cage, in the car. And I went to one facility, and it was the wrong one. I went oh. to the other facility, and I don't know what. But you took it in, and you got it back. So I mean, oh. thank you very much, because I was so afraid the raccoons would pounce on it during the night. Yeah, why can't people just throw rice at a wedding? Like I know, I know. It was really, it looked like a young one, and that's yeah. what they kept saying at the shelter. Yeah. Or at the Humane Society, they kept saying, this one looks really, really young, and I think yeah. it's really stunned. So tell the people about the differences in your shelter. Sure. It kind of fits in with your topic. We actually, we became, Peninsula Humane Society became a homeowner for the first time four years ago. We bought property in Burlingame, um, and the intent was for that property to house all of those programs and services that we choose to do as a humane society. You know, our adoption program, our education programs. Um, obedience classes in the evening, um, you know, our, our administration, uh, the wildlife rehabilitation work that we do, um, and some other programs. Um, and we purchased this property in Burlingame and built our new Center for Compassion. The full name is the Peninsula Humane Society and SPCA's Tom and Annette Lantos Center for Compassion. And, boy, you need a big business card to get all that on there. You do, and um, they loved you. Oh, that, the, it, that, it is. The Lantos is just. Oh, they did. And it was, you know, our, we had a very special person on our, on our board of directors. It was Larry Ellison's, um, now his ex-wife. Um, but Larry and his ex-wife were very supportive of the work that we did. They um, gave a large uh, gift towards our capital campaign. And instead of wanting the facility to be named in his honor, um, they chose for it to be named in honor of Tom Lantos for the work that he had done for the people in our community for decades and also the work that he did on behalf of animals. So it was a really nice part of our story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a nice gesture by the Ellis oh, at the time. Wonderful. So really, in a nutshell, the new center is where people can adopt. The old place at Coyote Point is the place where the animals start. When the stray animals come in, when the animals are brought there by officers who have rescued them, they start at our intake facility at Coyote Point. When they're made well enough to be adopted, and when we have space for them, they move over to the new center. We kind of liken the old place to Candlestick Park. I mean, it doesn't have great curb appeal, and it's crumbling in some places, but it's, it has many warm memories for people that have lived on the peninsula for decades. You know, they've got the first pet there. Maybe they've found 
a lost animal there, and, and for some, maybe they had to put an animal to sleep, and our staff were real caring and compassionate during that process. You are. You are. And we adopted our little honey bun from there. But we have a caller. So That's I'm cool. sorry to interrupt you, but, but uh, Rachel, Rachel is out of Foster City. Are you there, Rachel? Yes, I'm here. Okay. And you're calling on dog sitter recommendations. What a great question. Correct. Yes. I'm a, yeah. I'm a new dog owner. I just recently adopted. Um, and it's my first time. Um, I'm starting to look for a pet sitter, somebody who can watch my dog during the day. And I just don't know what kinds of questions to ask or what I should be looking for. And that kind of professional. That's a great question, Rachel. Um, and this, I, I don't know if this kind of led to your question, but we had a situation in the news recently where uh, a local pet sitter, which was charged with um, animal cruelty, real sad situation, and we could talk about that a little bit later. But one of the questions that came from that is, you know, how does someone know if a pet sitter is legitimate, if they have a, a good operation? And there really, I mean, there are several things that people can do. You can ask for um, if they have a business license, you can make sure that they are bonded. You can ask around um, to other people who have used the service. Um, I, one thing that I think would be important to do if I was going to leave my dog or cat with somebody on a property, I'd want to know that they had cameras on their property so I could see what was going on during the day. Now, mm -hmm. all pet sitters might not have that, but it's just, you know, it's one thing that that I mean, that personally, that I would ask for. Scott, I, I you know, and I really want you to go to, into this into the story about yeah. that that hit all the newspapers. And Rachel, I don't know, did you see that by any chance? Yeah, I did. That was one okay. of the That's why you're calling us. <laughs> okay, well, we have to go to break. So I don't want you hanging on the phone the whole time, but we will address it more in the second segment. Very good. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks, Thanks for Rachel. calling, Rachel. Okay, so we're going to have to wind it up and get on going so we can get these commercial breaks in. And we will be back at RE Radio Live in our Can You Find the Perfect Pet for Your Home? So stay tuned. RadioLive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Cuchera. And welcome back. This is Bobby Decker and Buddy Sope. Sitting in for Joe, or actually just missing Joe, the empty seat. Yeah, we haven't seen him for a while. We haven't. We haven't. I know he's alive and well because I get the emails. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so don't forget, if you want to see him alive and in person, you better come to this November 3rd from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Toll House Hotel in Los Gatos. It's the last Real Estate Radio Live community event. And don't forget, if you want to call in to ask, Scott, today, any questions, it's 800-516-1220. That's 800-516-1220. Or if you prefer texting, it's 650-346-5352. Now, Scott, we were just getting uh, on the uh, question of how do you select a doggy sitter. Yeah. And there was that very unfortunate uh I think it was Burlingame San Mateo, wasn't it? It was in Burlingame, yeah, right yeah. the area right behind Burlingame High School. Right, right, right. Yeah. So please elaborate on that a little bit. Oh, sure. There was someone who had a pet sitting and pet walking business for years. Um, we had received a few complaints, a handful of complaints over the years. Each time we got one of those complaints, we sent an officer or one of our trained investigators to the property. And each time we went to the property, we looked at every single dog in this person's care and none of the dogs had injuries. So there really, even though we did have a number of complaints, there wasn't anything that was legally actionable for us until recently. Someone who lived close by took some video footage with their smartphone of what they saw in the backyard at this private residence. And it was, uh, I mean, it was, it was shocking. It mm -hmm. was horrifying. It, the, the footage showed the pet sitter picking up a small dog. Well, b even before she picks up the dog, you see the dog cowering like the dog knew it was coming. She picks up the dog by the scruff, just yanks it up, walks around the yard a little bit, then slams the dog down on the ground a few times and hits the dog in between these times when she's slamming the dog on the ground. That footage came to us. Then we had something that was actionable. We went to the property. We seized every dog in the pet sitter's care. This included three of her own, and eight who belong to clients. And 
the, the reason was because we thought the other dogs were in some kind of danger. You know, we didn't, that dog wasn't on the property at the time. So we couldn't mm-hmm. look at that dog when we went to seize the dogs. So that left a big question for us. We, we, we don't know if that dog is injured. We had no idea. And we couldn't. You no, know, we just couldn't let the other dogs stay there. So we seized the dogs. It's perfectly legal for us to do that. And then days later, um, after not having much cooperation from the pet sitter, we released the information, the video footage to the media. And we even told the pet sitter, you don't tell us where that dog is, we're releasing this information. She didn't. We released the information. She later came back to us, told us about the dog. Our vet was able to examine the dog. This is now, you know, days after the incident. The dog was, fortunately, didn't have any lasting injuries. Um, So that really concluded our part. We put our case together, handed it over to the district attorney's office, and that's really an important distinction. We collect evidence. We're a nonprofit. We collect the evidence in these cases. Then we hand it over to the district attorney's office, and they determine if they want to pursue and what charges to pursue. And in this case, because the dog didn't have lasting injuries, it's likely going to be a misdemeanor charge, and that will be determined. I believe there's a, some kind of a, a court appointment um, this week if things aren't settled then. Um, this could go to trial next month. And these cases, animal abuse cases, typically don't go to trial. Um, I think because most people know that they they would lose. Um, well, I would think so. Yeah. I mean, I saw that video, and that was very disturbing, oh, very yeah. very disturbing. Yeah, and, and something you know, I, I want to expand on what I what I um, offered to Rachel. Something that pet owners should ask too, if they're hiring a professional, they should ask that person what their what their training philosophies are. Um, in other words, you know, there's the old school method of you know the dog misbehaves and you punish the dog. Um, you know, dog pees in the house and you rub the dog's nose in it and swat the dog with a rolled up newspaper. That's very much old school where, you know, people train dogs based on, um, you know, motivating them with fear. And that's mm-hmm. definitely not what Peninsula Humane Society, that's not how we train, not how our trainers train when we have obedience classes. But that was the excuse given by this pet sitter. That's, that's how she trains and it's legitimate. And if anybody has seen that footage, you'd know that's not legitimate at all. No, and it was very disturbing, and guess what? We've run out of time in this segment, Scott. Oh, no. Uh, Oh, yeah, but we're going to come back with even more positive things. Great. I mean, the positive thing about this is that the abuse has stopped. Yeah, and people now have advice to to look for good pet sitters. Correct, correct. So we're going to be back in just a few minutes. Stay tuned so that you can hear more about what Scott DeLuke has to say about having the best of the pets and having everybody happy. The owners, the pets, the whole kit and caboodle. So stay tuned. Come on back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome. Tips on how to keep our entire family, including our furry little friends, very, very happy. So if you do have a question for Scott, please, please call in at 800-516-1220 because he's an expert on this stuff and he's willing to share it with you. Yes, and we're going to actually kind of move into adopting pets now. Yes. So so one of the things that's very important about adopting pets is first and foremost, consider the Humane Society or one of the other credible organizations out there. These staffs are trained to really take a look at what you think you want and help you understand how that might work best for you and your home and your family and for the pet as well. So, Scott, maybe let's let's talk about the pros and cons of the dog's world, dog world and, and the different kinds of homes that uh, might be more appropriate for different kinds of and different types of dogs. Great. Now we get to move on to the fun stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank yes. you for plugging humane societies. Now, we're Peninsula Humane Society. We serve San Mateo County. There are great humane organizations all over the Bay Area. They all have many animals who need homes. And they all have folks on their staff, like we do, who spend a lot of time with these animals. We collect a lot of information when people have to relinquish animals to us. No, you know, We know about the animals' likes and dislikes and fears and their histories. Um, and for the animals who come to us, at least I know at the Peninsula Humane Society, we do a complete you know, beha- behavioral evaluation. Um, the, the animals who 
might have a couple of question marks, our staff ends up spending more time with them to better know them before we make them available for adoption. So we have a lot of information um, on these animals from the day they become available for adoption. And when someone comes into our shelter, and, you know, people should just be real honest. If they, you know, if someone's a couch potato and that's the kind of pet they want, they should say it. And I'm sure our staff would have some great recommendations. On the, on the flip side, you know, if someone is a busy professional and they run, you know, five miles every other day and they want a companion to go out with them and do that, um, we'll have recommendations for them on that end, that end too. Many people come to us, um, families with young children, and they want to know, you know, which pets would be great for children. And it's not always the little ones. That's a real common misconception that when people visit, if they've never had a dog before, they but they have small children in their family, they'll just assume, you know, we've got small kids, they've got a lot of small dogs. That's a perfect match. <laughs> not necessarily you know, so. Not necessarily so. You know, it can be. You know, and it really, mm-hmm. it's all, you know, it depends on the dog. There are some little dogs who would probably tolerate more of the things that little kids do. I mean, I have two young children. I know what, what little kids can do <laughs> around Pull, pets. poke, kick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Try to, yeah, put a saddle on them. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so people should be honest. We have a lot of information. They're happy to share it. And you are so good. I, I can remember on television when you said people think that that Jack Russell Terry is going to just be great in an apartment because he's so tiny, and yet they ricochet off the wall. So yeah. you've got to be really careful about that energy level. Yeah. And you know, the Hollywood stereotypes aren't aren't always the best. <laughs> and we can revisit that when we get back off this one break too. But um, how about the Chihuahuas? What a oh, disaster boy. that was! Yeah, we have people who walk into our center say, you know, this center is beautiful, but you have a lot of Chihuahuas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's always you know, there's the butt. You have a lot of Chihuahuas, right. and we say, you know, we're not uh, we're not Nordstrom. We don't order our animals. We take in what comes to us, and that is the breed not just San Mateo County, but all over the Bay Area, all over the state, really, in western states, it's the most common breed coming into most shelters. Mm. Lots of reasons for it. We like to blame Paris Hilton, you know, and the other mm-hmm. people of her, of her ilk that have the, you know, the little purse dogs that are more like accessories than pets. Um, but, you know, Hollywood definitely has something to do with it. There's the, you know, the Taco Bell commercials, the mm-hmm. Chihuahua movies. The movies, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, they portray the dogs a certain way, and people expect them all to be like that. Well, we'll jump in and definitely go and get the information on the next section, which Great. is a little bit longer, Scott. So we'll have right. more time to talk about cats and other little pets. Sounds so good. thank you again. Thank you again. And listen or stay tuned. Make sure you give us a call if you possibly can. 800 516 got to say, and I remind you one more time, the last Real Estate Radio Live community for 2015. event for 2015 is Tuesday, November 3rd from 3 to 6 at the Toll House Hotel in Los Gatos. So email us at community at com if you want any more information. And now we're going back to Scott and our dogs and our cats and how wonderful they are. Yeah. And they do. They bring, you know, medically, they bring down blood pressure. They are one of the best things seniors can do for themselves. Yeah. Speaking of seniors, can I talk about one? Sure. One of my fans. This is your um, program. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of my fans, um, a woman, local resident named Anastasia, came and visited our center, and she ended up adopting the oldest cat in our care. And I think she was looking specifically for a senior, knowing that, you know, seniors probably get passed over by some people who are only interested in the one- and two-year-old kitties and and, uh, some of the young adults. But she went for the oldest one. And the interesting thing about that is Anastasia is now 93 years old. Um, Wow. She's she's an email buddy with me, which I think is great. I I learn all about, you know, the cat that she adopted. And she had a great quote. She said, yeah, we just want to grow old together. (laughs) <laughs> which, I, which I thought was great. But oh, perfect. A companion for her. You know, she lost her other cat of 13 or 14 years. And maybe like other seniors, she was a little concerned about, you know, what happens if, you know, her new pet outlives her. And so she discussed it with her family members. She had a son and daughter. I think her daughter even lives with her. And her son was in the area. And they said, Mom, you go and adopt. If something happens, just know that we will be there to take care of your cat. So, and that's something that, you know, it's it's a really nice thing 
um, to think about. And it's nice that she has family members in that position who can help. Well, that's kind of how we ended up with Honey Bun. She, we had a, I have a client that was dying, and oh. their friend was going to take her, but the dog was too barky. It had developed this really bark, 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 you know, like Maltese's Ken. Yeah. And when we went to see her for the very last time, she said, please don't let her go back to a shelter. Please, oh. please, please. So we took her in, and a little bit of Beethoven and a little quiet music and a lot of don't do that. And now she's it not works. barking. <laughs> yeah, but we went to training to make sure yes, that we knew right. how to communicate with the dog, and rather than the dog taking instructions from us um, directly, we learned how to make sure we were in good <laughs> communication with the you dog. You are hired. Anytime you want to work with our animals, <laughs> you're hired. I have to tell you, she trained us good, Scott. <laughs> yeah, she really did. We love her. So, she originally came from you guys. Oh, one of her yeah. grads. Yes, but you were talking about cats, so let's let's dig in a little deeper into the cat world and uh, sure. what's going on there. Give us some more insight oh, into cats you know, and funny, homes. I, I'm always amazed when someone visits looking for a cat and they end up not taking one home because we have so much variety. I mean, with the dogs, you know, I think more people are maybe looking for a particular breed or a mm-hmm. size um, or a coat style. Um, but with the cat, you know, with our cats, we have close to a hundred. We have kittens. We have young adults. We have older adults. We have short-haired cats, long-haired cats. We have black cats. We have poly. Polyda- we every, occasionally we have polydactyl cats, the ones that have extra digits. We we do get declawed cats from time to time, um, but we we just have a little bit of everything. And the only thing they have in common is all of them need just one home. And the one the the two that I want to plug today are a bonded pair of cats named George and Gracie, and not everyone in our audience will know the reference, but I'm sure <laughs> you guys do. But we do. We do. <laughs> well, they, they came in together. And they're only three years old, but they've lived their entire lives together. And when we receive animals like that, we always try to keep them together, knowing they've, they've lived their entire lives together. It's going to be best for them if we can find one home willing to adopt both of them. We call those bonded pairs. So we're looking for one home to adopt George and Gracie right now. Oh, that's great. So, and, you know, what about Vicki? She lost her older cat. It was 16 years old. She's yep. heartbroken. Heartbroken, You know, because we've yep. all been there. Yeah. And Friend of ours, she yep. went down, and she got two. One's called, the little black one is called Leo, and oh. then her son fell in love with a, ta- no, the Leo is Tabby, and the little black one is Artie. And oh. she goes, why are you going to call him Artie? And she goes, just fits. <laughs> yeah, it's just like when people go to visit. You know, some sometimes they don't know exactly, you know, how they ended up with the pet they ended up with. They came in thinking they were going to adopt one kind of dog or cat and leave with something entirely different. It's, mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's the animal that that uh, touches them in some way or reaches out when they're visiting. That is so true. And we have a little. Our number one fan lives in the neighborhood, and she's five year old Sophia. And she has a little Yorkie that they adopted. And his oh. name is Feisty Angelo. And I'll tell you what. Feisty is a good descriptor for him. <laughs> yes. And she keeps him under control, it, which is very fun because it, just the type, the Yorkie is always in control. Oh, and maybe to see Sophia sounds, she sounds special. Maybe she can work for us one day. Maybe she can do that. She's going to be so excited to hear the offer was made. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be in a hurry to grow up. Yeah, don't don't grow up too fast. Well, listen, Scott, Buddy has a special fondness for birds, so perhaps when we come back from our next commercial break, we can talk a little about these exotic birds and how they also bring happiness to your life, but how that when they're abandoned, it can be heartbreaking. Yeah. Okay, so listeners, heard you ring us up, 1-800-516-1220. That's 1-800-516-1220. You've got one more segment to get your question in, and then we will be done for yet another week. So 